Are you kidding me? I was trying to squirt it out. It wouldn't work because I never opened it yet. Ugh. Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it here. Please smash the like button. I have learned that that does help get this video out to other people when it's popular so that they can benefit by it also. Okay, today we are going to go ahead and be hopeful that the garage will get warmer. It's 39 degrees right now. It was 12 when I came in here. I have the heater running, so if you hear something in the background, you may not. I have a noise cancellation mic on. Hopefully it helps. And that's why it's cold in my garage, because that's what it looks like outside. No, that's not my Rottweiler. That's a bear. A fake bear. That's what it did here. It stinks, but it is what it is. But it's cold. <laughs> so I don't know how much warmer it's going to get because the garage is not insulated. So I had uh, seen something interesting in my comment section. And I thought that this would be a great video. And it's something that I always wondered about. So let me go over this right now. I'm going to show you a comment from the video when we received the beam from MP of what Vea Broder, and I, and I hope I'm pronouncing the nickname right, I'm sorry if not, uh, left a comment, and here it is here. Now I gotta tell you, that's genius. So we're gonna do that today, and we're gonna show you the procedure on it. Uh, if you want to take a peek real quick, this is what happened with the beam that was on this car. There's what the beam looks like. Now they sell these plates like you see here. But I'm not doing that because I don't know how much rust is up inside of there. And it's bad on the other side too. So I'll show you when I get it out. Now you see why I wasn't impressed with this beam. Sometimes you can clean them up and fix them. This thing is toasted. Look, you can see through there too. And that was from a previous episode. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you what fittings to use, what drill bit to use, what tap to use. It's very easy. And we're going to pump grease inside the shock tower because that's where they rot from moisture. Well, when you're servicing your car and you're lubing the front beam on it and your tie rods, which I did a previous video on that, then you can go ahead and save your beam for probably 10 times longer than it would normally last. So let's go ahead and get on it. Here I come, I'm trying to get the beam picked up here. Oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna see where we wanna put these and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. Something I did forget to bring up and I the problem is, is I'm rushing to say everything because I know folks fast forward through when you talk. Uh, while I'm doing all the other things that you're going to see on video, in the background I am going to start sanding all the car down and doing the body work and getting it in primer. So as I'm doing upcoming videos that'll be two, three a week, I'll show you during the other videos like, hey, this is what I got done here on the body. Because I know a lot of you don't want to watch sanding and Bondo and painting and priming. Well, I will show the paint. But the point being, I will do stuff in the background and then I'll show you the progress on the body work instead of you sitting there watching it because I know it's boring. So I will conquer the body work in the background while I am doing the normal DIY videos and progress videos. Uh, one thing, if you want to see me do the cooling tins, I'm going to do them in the background too. Refurbish the stock German cooling tins, paint them, and a cooling tin installation video complete on the motor. If you want to see that, I'll do it. If not, then say in the comments, no. You know, I don't care either way. I'm just trying to be helpful and showing things that are useful and not showing things that aren't useful. Okay, I'm sure I bored you there. All right, so the first thing we got to do is know where to put the grease fittings, okay? because you want to fill this up completely, the shock tower. Uh, so this is a two inch narrowed beam. 
which is going to move these closer to the body of the car. Now also, we got to watch we don't put them in a position where you can't get the grease gun to it. So we know we can't put them on the inside here because you'll never get to them. Uh, putting them on the front, the fittings, probably not a good idea for where it's sitting in the car to try to get the grease gun. I was thinking about going right in between here, but then I got to pump the grease and try to fill up the cavity. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right there and I'll bring you up close. We want to be able to push the grease down through and then of course up top. But if we're going here, when you go to grease the fittings, you know, for your lubrication of your chassis, every, you know, oil change, it'll be easy to cut your wheel, say for this side to the left and come right in and hit that grease fitting. Uh, you're probably not gonna have to grease this very often but it can't hurt because once we fill this with grease, it's going to keep that rust from forming inside. Hopefully, but it should. Check out what MP did here. Did you see this? This is from this beam is from that video beam in the box that they now you know sell a whole beam from spindle to spindle. They used like a green Loctite that they ran onto the threads, the nut, and then onto the control arm, because I was trying to pick at it and I can't even get it. I, I could get it off if I used a screwdriver and hammer. That was a smart move so that this doesn't come loose. So I like that. I thought I would throw that in there. Here is the tap and grease fittings. So the tap and drill bit I got from Amazon a while back, which is a six, whoa. There we go, six millimeter by one. And then of course your grease fittings will be an M6 by one. I have straights, which is fine. But that's what I used on the tie rod situation. And these control arms, just like any other ones, don't come with grease fittings. I'm not gonna do it today. I won't bore you with that. But I'm gonna tap and put the grease fittings in the ball joints and tie rod ends so that you can lubricate them also, and you won't need uh, tie rods and ball joints every couple years. I already did a video on that, so I don't know if you wanna see it again. Okay, let's start. Okay, much better camera angle now. So I can bring the camera in closer, you know, to what I'm doing here. Now, like I said, you pick where you want to put your grease fittings at. Maybe some of you will put it on the front right here. <clears throat> I just figured going in from this direction, you know, you can come right in through the wheel well, you know, with the wheel cut and go ahead and shoot grease in there. We want to keep this filled up so that, you know, we don't form moisture in there. I, I think this is excellent. I really do. So let's get started on this right now. Okay, I'm all set up. Drill set up, tap, everything is set up. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll bring you in close. What I like to do first is to use a punch, something sharp. So the drill bit don't walk around trying to get started. So let's do that first. The spot that you want to be at, I'm going to do it about right here. Okay. The drill bit shouldn't walk around there. I have a little indentation. We are going to go ahead and drill our hole. Nice indentation first, remember. Now make sure when you are drilling into this, grease fittings are going to fit just into this hole that we tapped. So don't start moving your drill around and making the hole too big, okay? Now what I did do is I took the, and I'm gonna bring you in close while I'm doing this, really close. Uh, I took the tap and I put a socket on it. And the reason being is once I get the tap in here, the shock is going to be in the way of the T-bar that comes with the tap set. So tap and die set. I'm not going to remove the shock over it. So I'm just using a ratchet in case anybody wonders why I didn't use a certain tool. Okay. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of cutting oil, any type of lubricant really for what you're doing here on the tap and then tap it. So let's get this 
party started. I do want to do the uh, tie rods and ball joints. So if you do want to see that, just tell me. Okay. Take it in slow. Make sure you lubricate it like I did, though. It's not a real heavy, heavy gauge metal, so I'm going to back it out of here. All right, and put it back in. Okay, that should be it there. Let's take it out. Hopefully, nice threads. I bought a good tap. It's an Irwin. Let's wipe it off. Okay. I see nice, pretty threads. Hopefully, the... I had a problem once before with grease fittings. Not fitting properly, but we will find out right now. How that goes now what i am going to do first is i'm going to thread it in and not over tighten it and then i'm going to pull it back out once i know that it threads well and then i'm going to put some loctite on the grease fitting because i always feel there's a little bit of play in them and i don't like that so let's get up close and do that all right as you can see the threads look nice this is going to be hard not to block you give me one second here I always have a hard time. The grease fittings are so tiny. But then again, they're not supposed to be real big. Okay. And I have a seven millimeter wrench and I also have a socket set up to do it. Okay. And oh, hopefully I'm not in front of you. I can't see behind the camera right now. So this is threading in really nice. Now, what I'm going to do is pull it back out. Come on. Hello. There we go. Now, this part here you don't have to do if you don't want to. So, don't cry and whine because of what I do sometimes. Do it your way. There's two different ways to do it. My way, your way. So, I'm going to put some uh, Loctite on it. This is what I chose to use, the red high strength. Remember, if you want to use blue, don't use green. Uh, or if you don't want to use any, don't. That's just what I do to keep it locked in there pretty well because you are pulling the grease gun fitting off and on. So let's do that next. I'll bring you up close. Sometimes these camera angles are really tough to do. But... Are you kidding me? I was trying to squirt it out. It wouldn't work because I never opened it yet. Ah, now there's a hole. Must have got a newer tube and forgot about it. So I'm going to go ahead and put... Oh, yay. Well, it came flying out. <laughs> that's what you don't want to do. Okay, that's fine. You just want to make sure there's none in the hole where the grease has got to go through. And let's start that in there. I got Loctite all over my hands now. How nice. Bump the camera. Sorry, folks. Okay. Now, I want to take my time, because that's what you'll do too, right? Take your time. I know. I can't help it. I getting in front of the camera a little bit. I was going to use my socket, but I don't want to over tighten it. So I don't know why I'm holding the tip with my finger. Really not sure. Oops, wrench slipped off. Okay, that should be good. Now we're going to shoot that grease through that shock tire. Once you've done this and you put your Loctite on, let it sit for about a half hour and get nice and hard, okay? Because that's going to give you a little bit more confidence when you're snapping that coupler off and on from the grease gun. 
So I'll be back in two seconds, which will be 30 minutes, technically. Something I completely forgot, and I'm glad I remembered right now, because usually I don't remember stuff. Uh, a company sent me this grease gun coupler lock, and I'll show you it up close. It's by Saker, or Soccer. I would say Saker. Uh, I'll show you what it does. Sadly, I've had this thing for like six months and forgot about it. But, you know, when you put your grease gun on and then you're yanking, trying to get it off, I'm sure a lot of you have run into this with your grease gun. Once you press it on there, a lot of times you're battling to get it off of there. And I totally forgot they sent me this. And I'll show you up close why I'm going to use it. We're going to go ahead and put this on the end of the grease gun. But let me, do I have you close enough? What this does is you thread it onto your grease gun. And once it's on your grease gun, all you're doing is pushing this lever. Let it go and it snaps on. And then you pump your grease in, squeeze the lever and take it off. It's better than yanking trying to get your grease gun uh, disconnected from it. So I'll show you real quick in case you want one of these. I even got to find the link to it. I've had it that long. Uh, We'll put it on real quick. It'll fit all your regular universal grease guns. So I actually loosened this already. That's the regular end to your grease gun. So you're going to just spin this off, drop it on the floor. That's a must. And then you're going to just thread this on in place of the end. Mm. Okay, I'm going to tighten it with a wrench and we're going to give it a shot. That should be dry in a couple of minutes, the red Loctite, but I'm going to try this contraption on the other fittings. Contraption? Now, I'm not telling you to run out and buy one. I got to look it up and put it in the description. Who even sent it to me? I can't remember. But it's nice because, like I said before, you're pulling and pulling trying to get the dang fitting off where this... I guess it was that easy. I didn't think it even went on. And it did. Okay, let's pump some grease in it. I want to see if it pushes out the side or anything weird. I meant the side of this. Uh, oh my. Well, one thing's for sure. The grease is cold in my gun from sitting in the garage. Okay, nice. Oh, I love this. <laughs> That's going to make life easy. I'm going to have to try to figure out what company sent me this. I'll go through all my old emails. Uh, that's nice. We're going to go ahead and pump this full of grease in one second here. But I don't know how many times I got frustrated laying under a car because the factory fitting to my grease gun, I had to yank extremely hard to get it off of there. Hitting my knuckles off of the ground. It's normal. All right, this should be fine. Let's pump it up. So we're going to use, I'm glad I put this on today, our little quick connector. And what's nice too with this, and I'm not trying to sell it because I don't even know who sent it to me. Uh, you're not yanking and possibly breaking loose one of your grease fittings. Oh, that just came right off. Don't that work great? Let me see. Maybe I didn't have it on all the way. There we go. Wow, this grease is really thick and cold. I should have warmed the grease gun up. Okay, let me back you up again and I'll go ahead and speed up the film. The grease gun has definitely been sitting in the cold and that was my fault with the connector in the beginning because I didn't have it snapped tight. So we're filling up the shock tube, the shock tower, this here, this here where they rot. So we're going to fill that all up. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to speed the film up right now because I don't know how many pumps this is going to take. After you have this filled and you top it off once in a while, it's not going to take much. So I'm going to speed the film up and put some really cool 60s drag race music on. Hang tight.
So that was Slade Error because I didn't have that snapped on tight enough, uh, the grease gun fitting. I really like that because I was done, boom, popped right off. I didn't have to yank, yank, yank. So I don't know if it's filled completely, but I didn't want to keep boring you. I'm going to keep pumping it up, but this is definitely a huge positive. Let's go over a couple of things. I'm going to bring you close up. I'm going to tell you a couple of more things after that. Hopefully I get to meet a lot of you coming in May or June and I'll explain. Okay, come here. Now here's something very important that I'm going to show you and it has to do with greasing them in 3000 miles from now and not being able to get the grease inside of the fittings. Come here. If you see this, this little rubber cap, I'm trying to focus here, the little rubber cap, okay, you're going to take and snap it on there and it's covered up, okay? And wait, I gotta try to get it off now. Also, you wanna put them on all of your fittings, just like that. That will keep the dirt when you're going down a road that will keep the dirt from going inside. Wait, there we go. Inside the end of the fitting and clogging it. You don't want to do that. And where did I get these little rubber caps? They're the same ones that come with your wheel cylinders, the bleeders on them. So go on uh, Google and just punch in uh, wheel cylinder bleeder screw caps or something. It'll come up. If I can find it real quick, I'll put it right here. And just buy yourself a little bag of these because when you cap these off, no darts getting in them. So when you go to grease them and you pull the little rubber cap off, it's nice and clean. And they should also be on all the bleeder valves or bleeder screws to your wheel cylinders. So that is a big tip for you. Trust me, you'll thank me later or maybe you won't. So that was the Friday DIY which I had, a, I had a good time with this. And I can't thank that member enough, you have some stickers on the way, uh, for bringing that up in the comments. I always got frustrated because the first thing we check when we're buying beetles besides the frame head is, is it gonna need a new beam? If it needs ones, that's fine. Epi sells them complete in the box where you bolt them right up. But I don't think anybody wants to just buy one for something to do because you're bored. So that's a way. Now this brand new MP bean, perfect. I will grease that and keep that cleaned up. I will probably never need another bean. I really doubt it. So that's your DIY. Like I said, I'm going to start doing body work in the background while I'm still doing DIYs. And I will update you each week saying, this is what I got done, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, I'm going to do a complete cooling tin installation video. Uh, that'll be within the next week, because I'm just going to do like two, three videos a week now. I have to starting this coming Monday. Uh, I need the car done, especially for the meat that I'm going to have. Actually, the end of May or beginning of June, I want to do a Slade's first annual meet, and it'll be uh, in near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So everybody keep tight for this. I don't know if you can make it. Some of you live pretty far. I completely understand that. But there will be hotels, motels available, camping, where I'm having it. So I'm just trying to get the money together. That's the issue because it added up quick once I added up food and the pavilion and the parking area. It added up. So I'm trying the best I can. So thanks for being here. We're overdue for a live chat. Uh, I will announce if I'm having one tonight or Sunday night because it's been a little while. So we need a live chat. I hope everybody has had an amazing day. Well, I should say morning because you're seeing this Friday at noon. And I hope your weekend is just magical. Thanks for being here, everybody.